But we're at the point now that we're heading towards a very 1929-ish type scenario. The whole world is tilting towards recession. That's just not my. That's just not my view. That's the view of the curve. So first of all, um, I, I do think um, it's, it's, there's, it's technical, fundamental, and um, just lessons you learn in trading and markets. So um, Bitcoin could easily now reach that 12,000 to 10,000 support level. I mean, that would be very low in my view, but how it happened is quite significant because it happened on the back of extremely low volatility. 30-day volatility in Bitcoin just dropped to the lowest level ever versus the NASDAQ, versus S&P 500, versus uh, crude oil, and versus um, Bloomberg Commodity Index. They're most of the different things. It just got very low. So it's indication it's ready to break out. I thought at some point it was going to break out upwards, but it's breaking down with a good fundamental reason. Collapse of FTX, and as, uh, as Darcy mentioned, there's just some plenty of scams out there. So it's got a good reason to go down, and it's got the fundamental technical things to do that in the short term. But I look at it as within an elongated bull market, and I like to compare that to the opposite in crude oil. Crude oil had a big bounce within an elongated bear market this year and I can dig into those details later but that's the way that's where we are right now the key thing to remember is Bitcoin in terms of market cap and cryptos in terms of market cap is a rounding error compared to what's happened this year the, app, the example the total market cap of cryptos dropped about 1.3 trillion this year based on data in marketcap.com coinmarketcap.com that's the equivalent of two stocks amazon and google dropped about 1.4 trillion so far this year so it needs to be put in context what's happening this is the ebbing tide for all assets cryptos were the fastest on the way up they're going down the fastest and they're probably going to be the first one to come out of this and recover we're just not near that point at the moment the first generation of any technology does not stick why would Bitcoin? Why should we believe well, in it still? There, there's, well, we know there's 21,000 or so crypto assets listed in coinmarketcap.com. Maybe 100 of those will be legitimate and really matter in the next five or 10 years, and maybe 12 of those really matter now. Um, and yes, there's a risk that Bitcoin could not be the one. That's why we launched the Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index in 2018. Part of the reason, to me, that's the ultimate way to really track this space for institutional investors, be able to push a button, track an ETF that, that tracks the physical. To me, that's going to happen. It's a matter of time. Um, and this issue of FTX will tilt the regulation that way, but I'm not, I, I agree with you. Why Bitcoin? I don't know for sure, but remember, Bitcoin is the only asset that I've ever seen that is no one's project, one, no one's liability, and it's the most fluid 24-7 trading vehicle I've ever seen. And it's becoming a digital version of gold and go, a world going that way. And then you have 12,000 wannabes. Now, Ethereum is a pretty significant uh, measure of technology that I view as kind of akin to futures were almost 50 years ago when they came out and ETFs were maybe 30 years ago when they came out. But um, yeah, I'm not certain it's going to be Bitcoin, but sure is showing the signs of that surviving a thousand cuts. I, the sledgehammer to me is pounding out the foundation <laughs> for um, yeah. for uh, gold, long bonds, and eventually Bitcoin to trade more like those risk-off type assets. And it's just a matter of time. The key thing from the Chairman Powell, he, there's going to be no surprise from this. He's going to come out still pounding because he has to. Inflation's still high. And if you look forward, his risk reward is still needs to get inflation down. But we're at the point now that we're heading towards a very 1929-ish type scenario. The whole world is tilting towards recession. That's just not my, that's just not my view. That's the view of the curve, what's happened with the commodity spike in the past and Bloomberg economics team, yet most central banks in history are still tightening. That's typically an oxymoron compared to what's happened in the last 40 years of market. So that dangling carrot of liquidity that helps save anyone, everyone is not there. And Powell knows he can't put it there until we have potentially lower plateau in risk assets. Well, this number one means commodities, still the only one that's still up on the year. It's just Cryptos have been the you know the the leading leading measure of speculation and excesses of excess on the way down, and we're never going to see the ease of ease from the Fed as we have in the past. So mm -hmm. that's the stage we're in right now. But if there's any market, I mean, cryptos have already backed up eighty percent, and you just don't want to get too bearish when things are eighty percent. I think we're in the end, the final stages of this 
bear market for cryptos, but it's not going to be easy. And it typically markets don't just make V bottoms. They have to make it as difficult as possible. And the key thing I learned trading in markets, especially bear markets, is they'll make you lose your hair. They'll take money from everybody. And they have to be volatile and difficult. But that's the key thing. Remember, this is not a crypto winter. This is an everything winter, except for one asset class, the commodities. So commodities have to go down. If they don't, the Fed's going to keep tightening until they do. And so that, to me, is the way I look at it. And at some point, we're going to come out of this. But right now, as we head towards the end of this year, and we see chairman still pounding, we see the Fed fund rate expectations for next year still for more tightening a year from now. Um, that is bad for all risk assets. But then let's look forward. Right now, and let's just look at the price of Ethereum. It's $1,200. At the end of 2019, before the whole COVID thing um, hit, it was 100 so it's still up 12x. It's, it's holding good support around 1,000. It might get a little bit below that, but I fully expect that to come out ahead and to continue that upward trajectory over time. The key thing to remember, and I have to leave you with this, is Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two stalwarts in the space, have declining and definable diminishing supply and increasing adoption and demand. From a commodity standpoint, Something's got to change in that tra trajectory. You know, I fully expect the adoption point to increase after bumps in the road, and prices have to go up over time. And then let's think of remember what Ethereum is doing for this space. It's allowing the most widely traded crypto assets, dollars, crypto dollars. If you click on volume on any one of these websites, Tether's number one, then there's a dozen of them. It's, it's allowing this to happen, and the whole world has gone to the dollar organically through crypto. So what do you think about CBDCs? Good luck, China. Good luck, Russia. The world's already gone for the dollar. It's just a matter of proper regulation in the U.S., which is going to accelerate now with the collapse of some of the uh, recent firms you're hearing about. The key thing in Bitcoin is like the gold is the space. It's digital gold. So you, you hold on Bitcoin for the long-term prospects of the opposite you see in any commodity, except maybe gold. Declining supply, increasing demand, price must go up. By the time the world's going digital, do you want this benchmark digital asset or do you want to risk not being part of it? To me, most of the world's tilting solar towards, yeah, I'll buy dips in that. It's been a little bit early. It's getting hammered lately, but technology is still there. It's just the way you get to it. Some of these centralized exchanges are having yeah. issues. Um, and then you look at CBDCs. It's how do you define DC? Remember, just remember this real quick. Uh, China wants to launch a CBDC, but in the U.S., all you have to do is regulate crypto dollars like we do banks or primary dealers, and that's already happened organically. That's the key thing about this space where the U.S. is not going to mess up. You know, yeah. during this FTX fiasco saying, see, they've been calling it digital gold, but how can you say it's digital gold and Bitcoin um, when it has not preserved wealth? Oh, it's the greatest wealth creation um, asset in the history of mankind. So let's talk about preserving wealth. I fully expect gold in dollar terms is going to break above $2,000 an ounce probably next year, and never look back. It's technically fundamental to foundation. The trigger might be a, a pivot from the Fed or wimping out, as Nori Rubini says, so I don't, I'm bullish gold, but I look at gold as if you're holding gold in this world that's rapidly going digital and you're not adding some cryptos, Bitcoin or, or Ethereum to that space, most notably Bitcoin, you're at greater risk of falling behind. I look at it as why take that risk? And to me, that's where world was going. There was recently an article from Harvard about um, potentially central banks buying gold, just piggybacking on what Saif Adin Amos wrote in his book on the Bitcoin standard almost five years ago. It's just a matter of time. And you have to expect digitalization and technological advances to go backwards. And it's where Bitcoin and gold fit together. And one thing that's happening is every day that goes by, just this year alone, the volatility, relative volatility of Bitcoin is dropping versus most other assets. Why? It's new, it's nascent, and which is that block, ask Blockbuster what they think about Netflix. Yeah, very much surprised. I got to meet Sam at the SALT conference in the Bahamas. I think that was in April. Met him with Anthony Scaramucci, and that was where we all were duped. Um, and to me, it's much more important what this means. Now, coming from a futures, a highly, level, highly leveraged speculative futures background, where 20 to 1 leverage is normal in daily trading, this is unfortunate, but it's normal. It's the same recipe, different day, different instrument. High speculation, commingling funds, and too much leverage. I've seen it happen with so many firms. The ones you've heard about at MF Global, Revco, Enron, there's so many things like that. And that's not futures, but it's just normal. It's sad, but you have to flush out, as, uh, as um, uh, we mentioned earlier, you have to flush out some of these nefarious players, the weak ones, the people who've never really had yeah. proper 
training um, in running money, got to flush them out. And that's the key thing cryptos have been needing for a long time. So I'm sorry that I still think things like Dogecoin and Shibuino are just silly, stupid speculation. And it's, you know, speculators are supposed to lose. They're, over time, they almost always right. do in the long term. But what comes out of this Fair is the enough. same thing that's come out of the collapse in railroads and collapsing in bike stocks in, in the 18th century in, 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 uh, in Europe and collapsing the internet to get things like Amazon and Google. And I fully, uh, I'd like to compare the, the volatility of Bitcoin right now is actually on an annualized basis, annualized basis is exactly the same as Amazon. It's one to one. Amazon is giving that example is 25 years old and showing growing pains as the world towards towards recession. And then you have this NASA asset money asset class that's never happened before. Like I said, 24 seven fluency trading, no one's project, no one's liability. It's in early days. I look at it. So the risk is not having some of that in your portfolio.